So today, I just want to go over my birth plan because a lot of people struggle with birth plans. It's so hard, especially as a first time parent, trying to figure out what you do and don't want when you've never been through it before. Sorry, sitting on my son's bed in my son's room with my son playing loudly in the background. It's just hard knowing what you want when you've never been through anything like a birth before. So this is my second baby. Uh, my birth plan with Hayden. Very open because I didn't know what I wanted. Sort of stuck to what I wanted, but then at the same time, my birth went nothing how I would have liked. Like, it was traumatic and horrible and I don't want to do that ever again that's why I'm home birthing this time but I did mostly stick to my birth plan because I didn't know what I wanted and pretty sure the only thing I didn't want was like I wanted to avoid an episiotomy I wanted to avoid forceps and vacuum which I'm like I'm pretty sure everyone wants to avoid those and then the one thing I did want to completely avoid was the morphine injection the moral of the story is I had a birth plan but I didn't actually range off it that far. I hated my birth experience. Obviously not complaining. I have a happy, healthy kid and I'm pregnant again, so it can't have been that bad. I swear there's like hormones and brain changes that make you forget and blank out the trauma of pregnancy and birth. Um, Mika, my doula, AKA best friend. If you guys have watched my previous birth vlog and probably a whole bunch of my other random vlogs, she was in all of them. <laughs> um, was very interested. I think when she was at my first birth, yeah. it was as a supportive role as a friend, but also because she wanted to be a midwife and didn't want to go into that path without having seen a birth, you know? So giving her the opportunity to experience a birth and she loved it, obviously. Changed her path from midwifery to now she's doing a doula course. Um, and funnily enough, I will be her first like student birth as a doula. Like she has to do, I think, two births in a part of her program specifically. I'm gonna be her first birth again, a first birth of a different kind. She is obviously my doula, she's just in training. I think she's gonna be really good and she did up a birth plan. Um, this is the quick one we printed and stuck on the fridge like that, thus why it's been that way. I need to laminate it. Um, she has obviously got a whole bunch of other copies but this is just the copy I printed out just in case she can't get there for whatever reason. Going complete different route now. I'm opting for a home birth. I'm frankly terrified. Like last time, my pain got so bad. I don't know how anyone can get through that. I went to hospital because I wanted to get to hospital before the pain got excruciating so that I had the chance to start pain relief before that point. And obviously once I got to hospital, they fully broke my waters, which ramped things up a little bit, I think, but not enough. And then I started the Pitocin drip. And I can't remember if the excruciating pain was before or after that, but according to Mika, it was after the Pitocin and th that Pitocin messed me up. I don't ever want to do an induction again. So I'm hoping that I could have persevered. Obviously I had a really long labor last time, so I would have been exhausted. In retrospect, I should have got the epidural earlier just so I could have slept, but then the epidural didn't work for me enough for me to sleep anyway. So, I, but I couldn't have known that. Um, but basically I'm just, hello puppy dog. Yeah, I'm hoping that I could have persevered longer if I didn't have the medical interventions that ramped up everything and made everything turn crazy. And also if I didn't have the option. In my head, I was like, okay, I can get the epidural if I want. I can get pain management if I would, don't want to continue going through the pain. But whereas now I'm having a home birth, I'm hoping that, like, I'm going into this knowing there's no pain relief. So I just got to breathe through it, um, heat packs, TENS machine, those sorts of things, and just deal with it. I'm just gonna go through the birth plan because I have been completely rambling and there's literally a plan laid out in front of me and it would just be a lot easier to go through this. First stage is obviously dilation. I wanna be able to eat and drink. 
during my labor last time, I wasn't allowed to eat. I wasn't super hungry. I was just needing energy. And I was so exhausted. And one midwife was like, look, someone go down and get a, a cup of fruit from the cafe because she's not going to have enough energy to get through this if she doesn't have something in her system. But we're not meant to allow food. So I had like half a cup of fruit and that was it for... It was, I was hungry, okay? This time I have a stash of food, drink, I have a whole pile of Powerades I like, I have, I have Hydrolyte Icy Poles, I have lollies, I have more filling, long lasting carb snacks like Belvita biscuits and a lot of stuff to fall back on. At least at the beginning, before the contractions get too intense, I want distraction, I want to sleep when I can. I want to play board games, I want to have fun, I want to... At the start of labour with Hayden, I was in pain. But at the same time we played, I think you know, or Phase 10 or something, we ate pancakes. Like, it was good. I enjoyed that part of labour so much. And I'm having a home birth now, so I have the option to do that. First, The first bit where you're still at home, labouring at home. I can do that for way longer now, obviously. Um, so I'm excited for that bit. That bit was really fun and I want to do that again. Pain relief, obviously not many options for a home birth. It's a lot more natural route. So I do have a TENS machine. I've got heat packs. Luke has been practicing a little bit of reverse pressure, counter pressure. What do you want, darling? One second. Kinda looking at a little bit of counter pressure. Yeah. Mika obviously is learning counter pressure. Um, she's a bit annoyed because with COVID at the moment, they're not doing the in-person courses. So she's like, you are my test dummy. I never properly done counter pressure and it's hard to do on yourself. So she's been practicing, but um, trial it out. Labor, see how it goes. She's gonna bring some combs, I think. And yeah, that's my pain relief options. I want a lot of encouragement, motivation. I have Luke, I have my doula, slant best friend. I ha will have a midwife and then closer to actually pushing, I'll have two midwives. I do want cervical checks. A lot of people don't want to be, you know, interrupted in labor too much, but my curiosity is way too high. Um, I'm like, I'm not, I wanna know where am I at yet now? Like. Um, we'll see how that goes. Like, I might just be in the zone and, like, do not touch me. In general, um, I do want to track my progress with cervical checks. Then we have second stage, which is pushing the baby out. But for my second stage, my pushing stage of labor, I do want to wait for spontaneous pushing. I want to feel the urge to push myself. Saying that, last time I had a premature urge to push in my first stage of labor before I was dilated. Apparently that's sometimes linked with posterior babies or babies in the wrong position. Hopefully this boy is in the right position. He isn't currently, but he occasionally gets there and he's very wriggly still. I want to wait for that spontaneous urge, natural urge to push and then start pushing then. But once I've got that urge to push, I want motivational directed pushing from the midwives. I want them to be very hands-on and guiding Bob's head out so that I don't tear or minimize tearing obviously I'm not expecting them to just no tears at all but uh, a lot of the midwife's job is literally if everything else goes fine it's just to stop tearing however they can according to my aunt who was a midwife back in the day yeah perineal compress obviously just a part of trying not to tear uh, no episiotomy, no forceps, no vacuum, obviously. I, d I don't even know if they do. I mean, I guess they'd have to. I don't know about an episiotomy, but like I assume they'd have forceps ready on hand and stuff. I want to avoid it at all costs. Saying that, I just did a class for uni and went over how this little lamb died and all the pathological processes that went into his death because his head got stuck out mum and his body didn't follow for a bit. And now I'm like, oh, that's why they were panicking so much when Hayden's head was out and the rest of him didn't follow. Oh my God, this is horrible. Like, why Why did I have to watch that lecture? I was 39 weeks pregnant at the time. And like, oh my gosh. But anyway, that lecture kind of changed my mind. I'm like, okay, get him out, please. <laughs> but no, I do want to avoid it if possible. But with all of this, it's up to the midwives. I'm like putting it in your hands, I've spoken to them, 
about all the things I do want. I, I have switched from my primary midwife to my secondary midwife because my primary midwife has unexpectedly had to be off for the rest of the month and I'm hopefully giving birth this month so I have to re-go over everything with her. I have an appointment on Thursday, it's Tuesday today, and just make sure she's on the same page with everything. I do like my midwives, I like their views on everything which is awesome I can like trust them I'm basically like I'd prefer this but if you at any point think it's gonna be safer for me or Bob to do this just go ahead and do it third stage immediate skin to skin with the delayed core clamping I definitely want that I didn't have that with Hayden at all blood flow definitely not ceased because even though there was clamps on it when they when Luke cut the cord it sprayed blood everywhere all up my thigh that was like a horror movie all I could see was my thigh and then this splatter of thick blood and I was like oh that was lovely and Hayden was taken away and like everything they did they could have done with him still attached and they could have done beside me you know why they rushed to clamp his cord and cut his cord and get him away from me but they were really rushing it this time I want delayed cord clamping I want to wait until blood flow ceases obviously if it's like a resus or something um then go ahead but you know what I mean and then like if the blood flow ceases and then I'm suddenly like okay I'm gonna push the placenta out now like if I'm in the mid middle of the process of pushing the placenta out I'll just wait till the placenta's out before the cord's cut if the placenta doesn't look like it's coming right then and there and the blood flow ceases, then you can just cut it like I'm very breezy with the whole thing I want Luke to cut the cord he cut Hayden's cord he didn't like it um and right as I put that in he then said to me I don't want to cut the cord again and I was like really I just told Mika that you're cutting the cord but I asked him again and he was like no yeah I'll cut the cord so <laughs> I don't think he's that fussed but um it is just like a nice symbolic thing to do I didn't want the oxytocin injection I spoke to my aunt and she was like, no, have it. And uh, hemorrhage is like one of the number one killers of or mortality rates. What am I saying? Basically, hemorrhage is one of the big problems in that kills women during birth and pregnancy and stuff. Probably should have it, but then I just don't want it. It had messed up problems last time. I know now it was just the doctor I saw afterwards. I had the injection last time, the midwife was pulling on my cord last time trying to get the placenta to come out because it was a bit stuck in there. And it did come out and I don't know if anyone checked it but it looked huge and it looked intact. I didn't bleed much, I think I had 400 mil loss. Seems like a lot actually but apparently it's not much. And then I ended up with retained product anyway and it's sort of like because I had oxytocin injection, didn't bother to check for retained product and then once I had the retained product diagnosed because I was in pain two weeks postpartum and I was in more pain two weeks postpartum than two days postpartum um, I had an infection in my uterus when I went in they were like okay well we can give you a oxytocin injection to push out the rest of the placenta and I was like I'd already had that so why didn't it work the first time? I was like, no, can you just do a DNC and just clear it out? Because I don't want to have another injection and then still have this infection stuck inside of me because it doesn't work again. And I found out afterwards that it sh they shouldn't have offered the oxytocin injection for retained product two whole weeks after I'd given birth. Like, it shouldn't really have been an option. So much stuff went wrong and a lot of it was linked to the oxytocin injection, so I don't want the oxytocin injection this time. But I told my midwife, and I'll tell this midwife again, it's up to them. Like, I prefer not to have it, but if at any point it looks like I'm going to have a little bit extra bleeding or whatever, just give it to me. Don't, like, you don't have to ask. It's entirely up to you. But if it looks like I don't need it, just don't give it to me. Mika put this in herself, so she said, careful, check a placenta due to a history of retained product. I'm keeping my placenta. I don't know what I'm doing with it. Like, there's a lot of things people do with it, but honestly, I just want to look at it. It's just cool. Like, I wish I could have seen it better last time. Uh, Mika got a picture or two of it, and I wish I got to look at it more, especially with my scientific mind. I didn't, like, you just gave birth to a baby. Your focus isn't on 
oh, I wonder what my placenta looks like. It's on baby and bub and pain and all that stuff going on. So I've opted to keep my placenta because I just want a chance to see it later. And then I'll probably just figure out how you meant to bin it. It is like biological waste, but then so is a piece of steak. So I don't know if there's like rules about binning it. I'll have to look into it, but yeah. And yeah, I also want dad to weigh the baby. I don't know if this is actually a thing that's done, but the, they obviously have the scales and dad can be the one holding up the baby. I'm just like, oh well, Luke can go do that while I get cleaned up and whatnot. And there's just another thing he can do that sounds really cool. So, and I also delayed weighing because I want the skin to skin contact and like all that sort of stuff. And then the bottom section is alternative outcomes. Obviously this is in the case of transfer to hospital. I don't know why I would get transferred to hospital. There's so many different reasons. Um, it could be something as simple as I have given up and want pain relief. I've been going too long. My waters have been broken too long. Uh, umbilical prolapse or obviously I want Luke present all the time. That's the thing that made me want to birth at home is the fact Luke got sent home. But as soon as I had Hayden, he was pretty much sent home straight away. The lack of having support was the biggest struggle I had because I was so exhausted. It was like a combination of the exhaustion and the lack of support combined together. As in, I couldn't sleep, but I was falling asleep because I was so exhausted. I was sleeping mid-conversation with the obstetricians and stuff. Like, I was the most exhausted I have ever been in my entire life. I honestly don't know how I survived that level of sleep deprivation like I just I didn't know it was humanly possible I thought I would die from being tired I obviously want support this time I don't want Luke sent home obviously he will get sent home regardless because that's the hospital policy but but we also have Hayden now to consider so like if I'm gonna be there for a while Luke can't just stay with me because he's got to go home and look after Hayden the one birth that he could have been there 100% of the time for me was the first birth because we had no other dependents and we missed out on that so that sort of sucks but um pain relief only if asked for i don't want them to be like forcing pain relief on me just because i've gone into hospital or all that sort of stuff but at the same time i might end up asking for another epidural um augmentation only if baby in distress and considering what they define distress as as well because I don't want augmentation. And then obviously C-section, um, gentle cesarean. I actually didn't know what that was. I had to ask Mika why she put that on there, what that means. And it basically just means even though you're having a C-section as natural as possible, um, so baby straight, chest to chest on skin, as natural as you can possibly get it with your stomach hanging open and your uterus flopped out. The screen down and hands free. I honestly want the screen down the whole time. Like some people yeah. want it up and have baby just peeked over the top, but I'm like way too curious. I wish I could record a C-section, my own C-section. I wish I could go back and watch it. Like yeah. it would be really interesting. I obviously do dissections and things through uni. Like I would learn a lot from that and it'd be just so cool to see it done. When I asked last time, to put that in my birth plan. She said, my midwife said she'll put it in and keep it in mind, but it'll be really up to the surgery team at the time. And they also have to consider Luke. Like I might be fine with it, but Luke doesn't want to see me cut open. So I was like, oh well, face him that way. He can sit here and face me. Like I'll put blinders on like the horses have so that they can only see directly in front of them. And then baby with me as much as possible, which so yeah, that's my birth plan. I hope it was helpful for some people. Um, this is my second birth. I learned a lot from my first. I want to trust my healthcare team to do the best thing by me, but the healthcare system at the moment kind of sucks. And I don't agree with a lot of it. Feathers on their feet. I don't think it's her, darling. I think that's the color, color of her hair. I'm going to finish this here because this is a very long video of me mostly just talking. But I hope it helps some people. And yeah, I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. I don't know what this was. <laughs> see ya.